we've still got mob uh, doing what mob does, so we thought we didn't want you just sitting there, you know. Maybe you wanted to say hello to each other and have a little talk, but we thought we'd like to entertain the crowd because we are musos and, yeah, so. Yep, that's on. Check. Um, we might wait to do the welcome a little later or... Uh, here they go. <laughs> and you know, they're my mob, so you, uh, what can I say? <laughs> oh, no, that one, she's WA. I can't claim to <laughs> that one. <laughs> but we're all one big people and one world, one water. And... Um, so, um, no, Jacinta Buruburongo Karamerigo Darak Dalang. So my name's Jacinta Tobin. I actually come from Prospect and Richmond people, uh, but I'm doing a welcome to acknowledge um, our saltwater connection this way. Um, and my sixth generation grandma, she was actually married to a fellow called Dickie. Don't forget the name, it wasn't his choice. That was English gave him that one. But um, he was Ben Long's son, and uh, they didn't get a chance to create children, and so she uh, ended up marrying the first legal marriage of black and white in Australia, and they named a town after us, Blacktown. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> so um, I'd just uh, like to acknowledge my elders, past, present, and emerging, um, and also just to acknowledge all people, you know, because I heard my, my daughter do a acknowledgement to country and I thought, well, what about all the other people, you know, because it's all one world, one water. And I think that was our thing is that we've been trying to teach everybody good manners for a long time. You know, we didn't fight with each other. We didn't war with our neighbours or our next country. Times past, and now we're a bit shockers. But we never used to war with each other. We actually married each other. And our men, our young men, when it was their time, they'd go and learn the laws of their neighbours before they come back to marry. It was about cooperation, and we've forgotten that. And I want us to celebrate through song tonight to actually realise that it was all about cooperation. And we cooperated with nature, other than human, and we learned to be in harmony with all that is. So I'd like to acknowledge the Gadi Nora. This is the Gadigal country, the Darik Dalang of the saltwater dialect, and our neighbours, because we all shared the harbour. Why? Because we used to share a lot better than we do now. Well, you can, you can't deny me, because I'm a product of your Australian history. And from Blue Mountains to Sydney, this is my family. No, you can't, you can't, you can't deny me a Sydney originate. No, you can't, you can't, you can't deny me. Too many times we've stood behind the disguise And too many times we've watched our history whitewashed in lies Well, Australia, we live in an old and ancient country Something one world should celebrate, but we still will seem to have some trouble here. Well, sorry, Australia. That's the way it's got to be. Because guess what? This is my country. Too many times we've heard of a policy and a reform. And how come too many times black has to Constantly white learn No you can You can't deny me 
Cause I'm a product of your strain history And from Blue Mountains to Sydney This is my family No, you can't, you can't, you can't deny me A Sydney origine No, you can't, you can't, you can't deny me Times we stood behind the disguise. We chucked an intervention in, then we gave them uranium surprise. No, you can't, you can't deny me, cause I'm a product of this Australian history. And from Blue Mountains to Sydney, this is a family. No, you can't, you can't, you can't deny me, cause Australia, we got a black history. Here we go. Welcome, everyone. Well, that's a very hard act to follow. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Sydney Conservatory of Music at the University of Sydney. My name is Neil Costa and I'm Associate Dean of Research here, and warm, warm welcome to this fantastic event. Uh, it's called an Alfred Hook Lecture, but today we're doing it in an, an unusual way for SCM. We're going to have a, a panel, uh, a round table and panel discussion uh, entitled Renewing Aboriginal Songlines in New South Wales. And in a few minutes, I'm going to hand over to Amanda to introduce the, the session. But before I do, I'd also like to add my acknowledgement to the original custodians of the lands on which uh, this campus and the main campus of Sydney University sit the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, but also other First Nations peoples whose ancestral lands, the University of Sydney's other campuses, its education and research facilities are situated on. And I pay tribute to elders past, present and emerging of all First Nations peoples. Uh, SCM is a really dynamic, possibly one of the most dynamic, I hate saying that, research institutions for music, but a lot is going on here. Um, our research extends across a wide range of sub-disciplines in music, for, for, well, indigenous music, uh, Western classical, non-Western music, so we've got Chinese music, uh, Arabic music, all sorts of other things, jazz, contemporary, popular, digital music, and a whole lot uh, of other things, music education, musicology, and uh, the latest one is our music theatre course, so that's we're very excited about that. And we also uh, foster and support collaborations with multidisciplinary institutions here at the University of Sydney. So for example, the Sydney Environment Centre, the China Studies Centre, the Brain and Mind Centre, um, Sydney Nano, and of course, the Charles Perkins Centre. And we're also very, very lucky to host Paradisec, which is a world-class digital archive of records for the many cultures of the Pacific regions and beyond. And just a little bit about uh, the person who uh, we celebrate here with the Hook Lecture, Alfred Samuel Hook was a practicing architect uh, who believed architecture, like music, was an art vital to people's prosperity. He helped found the University of Sydney's Faculty of Architecture in 1918, and he retired as its dean in 1949. He had a great love of music apart from architecture, and he gave lunch hour talks on the history of music, um, illustrated by the university's collection of old gramophone recordings, which is something that we all love listening to these days. And he was a member of the university's choral group and a keen organist. He was associated uh, with installing the university's war memorial, Carillion, in 1928, and he founded the Department of Music, where I studied, and he founded that in 1948. Uh, so the Alfred Hook Lecture is made possible through a generous request from Doreen Robinson, 
So without further ado, I'll hand over to Amanda. Thanks, Neil, and thanks, Jacinta, so much for welcoming us in that way, in uh, the best way I can think of through, through your songs. Um, this panel discussion that we're about to enjoy brings together innovators in renewing song practices across Darug, Nyampa, Wiradjuri, and Uluroi language groups. And in their work on song renewal, the panelists draw on historical sources, but also on living memories in community, on attentiveness to the sounds of country, and shared knowledges to reawaken language and song practices that have been disrupted by colonisation. The panellists I'll introduce shortly are all leaders who are re reconnecting with songs that have been sung for millennia in the place uh, now commonly known as New South Wales, but which covers many um, Aboriginal countries. The panel uh, is supported by an ARC discovery project called Hearing the Music of Early New South Wales. Um, Professor Jacqueline Troy and um, Jacinta Tobin are involved with that project along with me and Neil Perez de Costa, Toby Martin, Graham Skinner and Matthew Stevens. And in that project we were really um, thinking about wanting to hear historical records of music making on the country we're on now. How could we bring things that were written down on paper a couple of hundred years ago back into practice through performance, through singing, through collaborative creativity. And as you'll hear tonight, I think these panellists are doing so much more than bringing to life historical records. And I think as musicians or as listeners to music or simply as people resident on Aboriginal country, I think we all have a lot to learn from the kinds of things they're doing. So I'm really excited that they're all here with us tonight. And I'm delighted to now be able to introduce our three panellists here tonight. Um, but I also just want to acknowledge um, the fourth panellist that we were hoping to have with us tonight, um, Professor Jacqueline Troy. Um, and um, Jackie's very sad not to be here today with you. She wanted to be here for these two days involved with the song renewal workshops um, that have been going on. But very sadly, um, her husband, um, Podrick O'Leary passed away on Monday and um, I just want to take a moment to honour Podrick and to um, send our love to Jackie, Lara, Shirley and, and all of their family and that we're all thinking of them and are very sad um, that they're not here but more sad for their loss and the, the things they're going through tonight. Um, and. Um, will, I'm sure, have other opportunities to hear from Jackie's work as a Narragoo linguist and all of the creative work she's also been doing with song. It's been really special to have a lot of her community here over the last couple of days um, making songs together. So, um, so um, the really joyful thing is that um, the three panellists we do have here um, I'll introduce now. So you've already heard from the wonderful Jacinta Tobin, uh, who, as she's just told us, is from the greater Sydney region, of those bloodlines connected to the area who are still trying to reconnect with each other and their own land due to the brutal effects of colonisation. Now she believes it is time to relearn our ancient frameworks of mapping and cultural responsibilities to country. Uh, Jessie Hodgetts is a Wong, Wong Ipon and Wiradjuri man of Western New South Wales and was born on Darkenjung country on the central, no, central coast of New South Wales. Jesse is a singer who makes songs about his country and also has kinship ties with other Aboriginal singers across New South Wales, such as Gomorrah, Gumbangir, Gatang, Darug and Dorga. Jesse is currently a member of the academic team at the Wallatooka in Institute at the University of Newcastle, teaching Aboriginal education and research in song and language. And Nadi Simpson is a Uluroi st storyteller, a musician, composer, author, and performer of 25 years experience who uses sound, voice, language, and words to connect and share with audiences around the world. And it's not, it's not in their bios, but along with the expertise they've mentioned, I also want to acknowledge uh, that they're all, all three of our panelists today are also PhD scholars. Um, and I want to congratulate Jesse for being recently awarded his PhD. <laughs> 
And, and I look forward very soon to also being able to congratulate Nadi and Jacinta on um, um, getting through, I mean, um, <laughs> triumphing through their, their joyful process of um, PhD study. And I think the future looks bright indeed for universities with scholars like this moving through these institutions. So I'm going to exit stage left or right and hand over to Jacinta. Song on renewal, I, I, I really, um, I hope that this is a chance for Australia to actually learn, am I, am I on? No. There now it I, is. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's a little button that your press is on. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that this is the chance that um, not just as Australians and a Aboriginal people or original people from this area and uh, uh, from this great continent, but for us as a world um, audience to actually look at some really, the more research, and I've, I've never been, <laughs> I've never read so much in my life, uh, but it is really uh, a very clever, and we were, we were talking before, you know, like a song line is not about a performance. And we were having this battle as performers, what is our role as a performer and what is our cultural roles as song people or connection to country, what is our role to the country itself? And, and I go, and, and we've, we've had an amazing day today, um, so, you have to forgive us because we we've been on our own curry time. We've actually been decolonising the, con <laughs> the Sydney Conservatorium. Everybody just chilling out on the grass, laying all around the place. God love us, but it, it was good, really good. It was thank you to, for today, everyone. But it's also about us actually understanding as human beings that there's a, a science that has been in this country for sixty plus thousand years, yeah, and that we haven't looked at it correctly as a science. We, we might say a song line, yeah? But what if, what if we use the words electromagnetic field that the animals tend to follow? <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Okay, um, we would say um, uh, things like, um, I'm trying to think of the, the bush telegraph is something I'm, I'm getting my head around. And we've been talking about the mycelium community which is the, I call it the underground internet, yeah? But um, I was taught that certain trees were marker trees. So when you traveled and you knew your trees, so that's why we've got bunion nut trees here, because our mob would go up to Queensland and the Queensland mob would come down here. And along the way, if they saw their tree, they knew where to camp. Now, what's not to say that old Bush Telegraph was those clever ones who could remember to communicate with the bacterial community and the mitochondria, uh, oh, that's another one, uh, uh, the um, psyllium community and send a message through the trees. You didn't have to walk it, but we, could we actually take our minds there because we've got science now to back it up in Western way of thinking to say, hey, wait a minute, this could be quite feasible. Let's have a go and research this ancient science. And we now know that, oh, when you play the Beatles or Mozart to plants, they seem to grow better. <laughs> so why wouldn't you assume when we sing to country, it isn't healthier? This is where I'm wanting to go with, our, with the studies I'm looking at. And actually, even I'm, I'm even getting fearful of writing my language now. There's a part of me that feels like it got colonised. But then I found out that when you write you and, and read and arithmetic, you're using the left-hand side of the brain. So really by us doing a doctorate is trying to cram two ways of thinking through song because music stimulates both sides of our brain as well as speech. So our two-way brain thinking education system that has been here for so long is now getting us to teach it this way. 
And we haven't thought about this as, as human beings in this country, well, maybe as mob we have for a long time, but as, as Australians in general, we haven't actually taken time to give, I don't want empathy for my culture, I want respect back for this culture. I want people to realise the reason why there was these corridors, like, you know, we've managed to um, concrete all the water. Well, by doing that, we're actually heating the water. And we wonder why we've got heat waves, like uh, my, my family are still out west, uh, Western Sydney, because we got kicked out of Sydney, <laughs> can't afford it now. But um, the, the, the people uh, now are experiencing extremely extreme heats. But we keep putting this tar. Do you know when you tar a road, you kill the microorganisms? That's that micro um, network underneath. So there's so much more to talk about, but I don't want to hold up the space. But I just want to put these words out there for those who have the science backgrounds. Because I don't think, and this is it, are we performers or are we song people? Because we are not just doing song. I was saying before, I used to massage people and I realised my hands can't help enough people. But if I sing, I can reach many and help heal. So that's how I feel about song. Um, so as renewing song lines to me, um, well, what does song lines mean to me? I guess where our, where our old people walked and travelled and um, where our ancestors travelled, um, you know, where they stopped, where they left their spear in the ground or uh, where they caught a emu and then light down to sleep or all these places where big great ancestors um, went um, so learning learning those pathways of where ancestors went give us more of a sense of um, purpose to know who we are then because if we know our history uh, and know our ancestors are then we know who we are today so um, yeah so that's my sort of my definition or understanding of a song line um, and then singing the songs of those ancestors and singing the country and um, singing about the bala tree and its connection with the spears but um, renewing them um, I suppose country is living so if we're out in them places and sitting with the bala tree and sitting with the um, sitting with the birds and sitting with, with those waterways and the rivers, um, you know, that's, what, that's when we start to learn um, what's there and the country's then teaching us. Uh, and as singers, for me, I think it's our responsibility to um, sing for the country um, and have that relationship with it. So it's because that, that country is our kin as well. Um, but... The other method of accessing archival material and research and the role that, um, I guess, academic institutions have played um, has helped because um, a lot of us probably already know the story of language genocide and cultural genocide and our songs being uh, not passed on forcibly. Um, I know when I think about my nana and that, um, there's always that level of shame around not being able to learn the song and learn language. Um, but fortunately, a lot of songs were recorded for us, um, particularly out in uh, Ngapa country. Ngapa is the language of Wong Um They were recorded um, in 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, and there's really common melodies in them as well that, that I'm, I noticed and my mob noticed when I played it to them um, that reoccur in other places. And even melodies. Um, that reoccur in songs that Mama would sing in English, you know, little mission songs and things. Um, um, like that Jackie Jackie song we were talking about or earlier that a lot of people know it was an old mission song. Um, but the lingo part, is a really common melody for a lot of the singers out there. So that's really helped us into. into um, sort of the musical side and our identity, because songs are our identity too. And I started to notice that when you, um, 
after listening to different songs, you can start to identify where they're from as well. You can identify who sung them even, right down to the individual sometimes. Or it might just be a song that um, is attached to a particular language group, or it might be a song attached to multiple language groups. Um, people singing about the salt water that live inland, or travelling to the salt water. Um, yeah, so renewing song lines, there's so many methods that we're, we're working through, uh, I guess, as, as Aboriginal people um, in our own communities, um, but also getting into these institutions, you know, and doing that work is, is another avenue for us um, so we can be supported to access our, those old songs. They've been really helpful. Um, and it's up to us to do it, you know, so um, it's been a big journey for me and it's... Working in academia has helped me, doing that inner study has helped me understand more about who I am and who my family are as well, because you um, research in these songs and I go and ask questions of my, say my nana, you know, and she'll remember things that, because no one's asked her that question, like things like kinship and Ingara and me. So, um, you know, I applaud any black fellow First Nation Aboriginal person that goes in them institutions and uses that system to renew, revitalise. Um, it's a really powerful thing. Um, yeah, pass it on. <laughs> um, I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> and then uh, I talk to things without a mouth. And this is part of me understanding how I move in the world and then part of me understanding what song <clears throat> can be to me. So I talk to uh, history. I love yarning to language. Uh, I talk to ancestors. Uh, I talk to knowledges. And I talk to country and I'm trying to become a better listener in all those things. Uh, and I'm learning that listening isn't just shutting up, <laughs> which is hard for me anyway. It's, uh, you know, that full body listening and intuition as well. That's a, you know, legitimate communication form. Uh, to these huge conceptual things. I like to think that I talk to song lines and all those things that, you know, don't have a mouth. They all sing back. So I keep yarning, you know. I might look womba, but I still do it. <laughs> and this is me understanding, you know, that I move through the world with this one here, mm, way first. And this is common for all, many of our mobs, eh? The seed of knowledge is here. The more of this you do, the more you know, acknowledge, remember, think, connect. Um, and so by having a living relationship with non-speaking, singing things. That's what I've done consciously for the last kind of maybe five years, but unconsciously for my kind of adult life. Uh, and it's a, a beautiful, rich relationship of which I am always subservient, which is good for me because especially when you're walking around places like this and knowledge can be a hierarchical way to move um, upwards. If you're always lesser than for these great things, that's good for you. That's good for me, anyway. Um, and it helps me orient myself in a way that I think is respectful and um, um, uh, cognizant of others and that which I don't know. Really important to me in thinking and talking about song is uh, always bringing forward my own unknowing 
if I can put it that way. Now, do you know less than you do know? And, you know, for me to walk into conversations like this saying, I don't know, I'm, I, I listen and I um, respond and I feel, but uh, I don't progress. I just continue. That's how I think and talk about these things. And we spoke earlier about this. There's a real, in that kind of way, um, you know, there's that sort of, for me, it's a visceral kind of relationship with these um, intangible things, maybe. I, I think that might be the word. Um, um, but there's also a kind of abrasive something, which is the joining of performer and cultural person. Um, uh, a, a gig and a ceremony, um, a knowledge and a resource. These things in for me are difficulties that I confront, try and confront when I think and talk about how I move in the world in a, in a, in a sonic way. And I, you know, I was walking through the domain here today, I was um, in town, I was thinking, I've got to, am I gonna write something for this thing? Because this was really important to me. And I wanna say the right things. And I, I wanna represent the way that I think in the right way. And I started to stress out and I'm a chilled person, you know? Anyway, I was walking through the domain, next thing I know, crying. Um, because it meant so much to me, but then uh, I went and did my business today and I come in. First follower I saw was Les McLeod and then Manda and I knew Jacinta and Jessie and my sister and then seeing this amazing song woman here, Kerry Ann, who's been a leader in our female musical community for years. Um, and jazz and the work that you're doing, Kevin, who I work with. Then I thought, I don't need to write things. I just need to uh, connect and feel and uh, relate to those people in that way. That's how it goes from being a something that, you know, I'm exploring and whatever, studying and all that there, to being something that's actually got meaning because it sits with you and you and you and I work out how I can be useful and I can uplift and I can listen and learn from you fellas. This is how I do it. This is how I want to do it. Whether I'm successful or not, I don't know. Um, I want to just talk very quickly about that um, photo there. Um, this is a, an example really of um, how things come together for me. A long time ago, uh, you know, I read this um, kind of passage in a, uh, it was an amateur ethnography by a white woman up there in Banquet Station. Uh, Katie Langlow Parker was the wife of, a, of the station owner at Bangor in Uluru country, and she said, um, uh, uh, a corroboree is, is um, the blacks' opera, where the orchestra are the women who play the possum skin pelts. And I thought, you know, language, yes, we all know how this has come about, but she's calling those ladies an orchestra. And their instrument is the garu, the possum skin cloak. And, you know, I, I'm, I want to muck around with music. I want to make an instrument from my country. And I want to sit next to my country women and sing. And uh, Scylla Strazik Barker is a beautiful friend to us. And we often ring her and say, we've got this, we've got this scheme, you know. Are you interested? And she always says yes, because she's a beautiful lady. So uh, we said, we want to make a garu, we want to make a cloak. 
and there's this beautiful revival and revitalization of cloaks in New South Wales come up from the border from the Koori ladies down there, that now this is something that is quite commonly seen. 20 years ago, it was some, some, a small, beautiful, um, quiet re-emergence. And because of the, that mob and their vigorous um, revitalisation of that, it travelled up to us to think that we could do the same. So we made those garu, possum skin cloaks, we made two, and with the um, outcome of well, with the view to singing a song and hitting it, uh, which we did. But the point of it was, of course, you know, in the project, in the way that things happen, the value was not in the instrument or the song, although the song was, you know, important to me, but it wasn't. The point was the seven of us sitting around making those things for the first time in 80 years, back in Lightning Reach. And the point was that, gee, we made some funny, we had some good laughs up there, eh, Luce? The point was us relating and being, I can't think of the words now, being connected. And music allowed us, music, uh, facilitated us to be kin in a very d meaningful way. So look at that and I think, yeah, that's it's deadly. There's a Uluroi instrument there. But I think I will never, ever forget the, the time that we spent up there. Um, making it and putting our designs on it and yarning and telling jokes and chucking pelts at each other and rolling around trying to practicing sitting down and getting up and all this kind of stuff that the music actually brought us together in a way that uh, uh, we hadn't been for a while anyway and then you know the sort of tail end to that yarn is uh, we performed down in Canberra. We did a performance. So actually the cultural practice was making the thing. Then there was a performance, which uh, was very different. Uh, performed in Canberra, then Scylla and the girls went home and she sent us a photo two days later of a possum in the tree next to the Gundi two days after she got home and they hadn't seen a possum in town for a long time. And that's not because of us. That's because of vib the vibration, the people, the, the practice. The, that was the layers of time coming on, all folding in on each other, I reckon, and saying, that was a good idea. We understand that language. Um, keep doing things like that. So that was Yugal Marai Barai. That was the, the song, a, a song ha, the, the song that had a possum in it. Uh, and that's how I, that's how I go. That's what I love to do. Uh, a, a, a musical idea taken to people to make better. Yeah, that's it. But um, when we were yarning before, eh, and talking about this abrasive stuff about performance and culture and how does how how do we um, how, what's what's our role? Because we're good at music and we're, our ears are tuned. But when you talk about a song line and how you know, to me, I, I think of those things as you can't muck around with them, and there are the right ways to do it, and there are really important internal structures that you need to engage with and important people that you need to engage with in the right way to make those things move the way they do. And it was I, I wanted to um, hear again your fellas' response to that about um, being musical and then having this really important um, cultural structure and how, how 
what our role is or what, how do we dance in that and hearing how, what you fellas thought about that because I get confused about that sometimes. Well, I was wrapped with the possum because I do believe because of the making of the, it's like you put the call out and nature heard and said, hey, look out, we need more possums. <laughs> look at how many skins are on the ground, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it, and, and it also <laughs> took me to the social system because yeah. <clears throat> we don't think about, like, because with the song lines and the movement in country, we don't think about the social system that that created. And when you're talking about how you're having yarns and <clears throat> throwing, you know, pelts at each other and things like that, and and that was the thing is that you'd go to someone's country because the, f the food was on, but you'd also, that would be part of that one's, like, say, if we're Parramatta, the eels are on, so everybody goes to Parramatta. And so the eel people would be boasting about how good a song people they must be because look at all the eels and you're feeding the lot but then also they're there saying, now that's enough. You've feasted enough. Now we have to watch that lot go. But then next thing you know, they might head up the mountain or they might head out to Larpa because the whales are on the move. Yeah? And I think this is the problem is we've been stagnated in our movement through country as Aboriginal nations and cooperation and bringing together people. And also, who are we going to check out to marry or stuff, you know? <laughs> don't, can't go looking local, you know, that just don't happen. So you have to have those sort of movement through country and, and this is the thing. I think we were talking about it. We, we had a lot of talk with it. Damn, we should have taken that. But um, the, the fact that we're not museum pieces this is a living culture we're talking about and that we need to be able to access places. We're talking about the fences, you know. You guys got in the, that, there was some fellow that said, you ain't going to come back this way, you know. Yeah. And this is, and I said, well, what about, um, there's a law in England about rights, uh, what's that law? We didn't get the name of it, did we? The rights to travel or something. Yeah, that, that you can... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the people can... Why haven't we got this in this country? These song lines are so old and, and would and nature will respond, I believe, mm. to that core of us moving through and bringing back the social system. Everybody's bored in little towns because nothing's going down. But if you're moving around, you know, the, you, you're getting to meet each other, you get to... Then, then a resource isn't... Uh, depleted because everybody's eating the one thing, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, it blows my mind because, as you said, there is so many layers of a song line. It's not just, and there's so many protocols and whatnot. But if we don't start, I'm worried. Yeah, we will have 2019, 2020 again, you know, because also part of that movement was the cool burns, clean up the bush after we left. Thank you for the food. We're out of here, and we did the clean up of the camp. That's well, I've been taught is that you know, so the men would go off to the next camp, and the women and the old people, you know, clean up the area, and off we'd travel. What do you reckon, Jess? Mm, yeah, access to land is, is a massive one. That's that's the two worlds. Sometimes I feel like we have to live in. Um, that becomes quite difficult. Um, when we learn, like when I learn these things from from my old people about, you know, song lines and travelling and needing to go to this place and um, how, um, you know, old fella went through here and he stopped and that's the place where you learn about that. Can we go there? No, it's on someone's farm now. It's yeah. on someone's property. And we used to be able to go there, but then they, someone else bought the farm and that person doesn't like us, they're a bit racist, so they don't let us on. Um, so, you know, like, why isn't there laws? There is there is laws. It just depends on which law we want to follow. <laughs> you know, do we want to be sovereign people and go, well, this is my, this is, I do have this line where my ancestors travel and I do have a right to go here um, and take the risk of trespassing on the colonizers' constitutional law, you know. <laughs> so that's the two worlds we're always living in um, every day, like even when me going to work every day, going to university every day and, um, seeing um, 
different copyright laws and intellectual laws versus um, culturally how things work. Our collective, <laughs> collective ownership's a really powerful thing for us. Mm. Um, but in the other way, individual ownerships, is, as you were saying, the knowledge hierarchy. So it is tricky. Um, but I suppose on that governance and uh, structures around those song lines, um, what I was, the old fellow always said to us, you, gotta, you have the story owners, the story holders, the song owners, the song um, holders, the dancers, um, and all those things keep each other in check to make sure the story and the um, ceremony's done properly. And it's not just a song, so in that case, the song is the ceremony, the dance, the stories told, the um, paint ups and the and the artifacts and things, or the whatever you what do you want to call them? Props, artifacts, probably not the best word. The props to represent your country is all part of that ceremonial song line. So they've got to be done properly. So I find that um, that collaborative approach, as you were saying before, with being together in that relationship is where the real power is. Um, so. And like in, sorry, in that bio earlier, expanding on kinship connections. So my, through my, <clears throat> my um, Nana's father's Wong Up on Nana's mother's Radri, uh, my father's Australian English. Um, so they're my bloodline ties. However, um, I have a lot of kinship connections that I, I need to acknowledge and respect because the way they respect me. Um, like, for example, some of the Gomorrah brothers in Tamworth and um, some of the um, Radri fellows down at Cowra, for example, who, who help me and share with me and share their songs with me, and then I learn them. I might not be the um, owner or authority of the song, but I'll help them by being a holder uh, and sing it with them, and we might have four or five singers, and then they learn my songs uh, or my mob songs. It might be collective uh, ownership, um, and when we get together, we've got this really powerful um, connection and kinship with one another when we sing. Um, I'm thinking of one particular song and dance in my head that we helped, that we revitalised. We knew the story, so I'll fellas share the story with us. We didn't know the song yet. Although the song was actually written, it wasn't, there was no audio for it that we knew of. And one of my uncles um, made a new song out of what was written, but he didn't have the melody or anything. And then later on, um, we did, we found the song recorded somewhere, and um, um, no one knows who the, who the owner was because it was, no one, knew, no one knew who made it. And people just talked about this song that everyone just knew um, about the crow. And, um, and it travelled at least from uh, Bree Warner down to Crow Tank, Murren Bridge, people were singing all, all that distance. Um, so then we talked to my old people and played the song and they're saying, oh, we can see how that should be danced. Should, you know, if we're talking about the crow, we can see the dance when we hear the song. So collectively we brought that back amongst our mob and now every time we sing it, um, like I'm watching this particular dances in my mind that I, that, I, that I think about when I sing that song and I can see them dance and then they, sometimes they'll even like look at me when they or look at one of us when they're dancing and then I look at them. Um, it's like they're dancing me, you know, so I can sing and then I sing them so they can dance. Um, and that's where the real kind of, for me, where the power of uh, renewal and song lines is, is in that um, kinship with one another. Um, so in terms of those structures, yeah. But um, yeah, so that's you talking about that story at the possum. Yeah, inspired me there to talk about that. Um, that collective ownership for song renewal. Mm. Yeah, and it's like um, you know, it uh, things like that. And this is the good sign. In a world actually where in a song in a in a musical world where actually it's not clear what the rules are, 
as a cultural person with historical practice and a contemporary career, it's not sure, it's not clear what the rules are in how to make um, ideas tell you and um, uh, get a roll on into showing you you're on the right way. You know what I mean? And that song is really good for that. A song gets louder or a, a, a creative idea becomes greater than the person that kicked it off. And that's a cultural way of saying, follow that, I think. And that's sort of, for me, it's like, oh, thank God, because, you know, I don't know how to do this. Mm. And I don't want to do it the wrong way. And I, my passion is to get women in our, my community singing, but they're shy. Everyone can sing. That's what I was saying. Karaoke goes off on a Friday night, you know. Everyone can sing. But you ask a group of women to sit down and sing with each other, shy, shame, can't do it. So when you have kind of happy, um, not coincidences, when you have a, 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 a you know... The signs in your signals yeah. and... Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, we've had that today. Mm. I think that's also an Aboriginal... That's our way, isn't it? Like, because we've got to have something outside our own ego to give us a sign. Because I was, I was thinking of the, when I did that, we did the song together for Sydney and... And we sung part of that song was for the for the whale, and we've had two birthings in the harbour, yeah, this year, and it's it's special. But yeah, and until you get those little signals and signs, or would you do a song with Nardi Simpson? Oh, okay, <laughs> you know, they're, they're the things. Hey, they're the encouragement places. Yeah, and the thing that makes gives you the confidence to keep trying the next thing because you know you can get battered you yeah know. I've been battered before today because also too being Sydney way there's not the there was elders but um, and what you know the right way business the only great advice I was ever given as long as it was there with right intent mm. if you are doing it for right intent all is well and that's because so many things were, um, you know, two-thirds right, wiped out in the first five years of settlement. People hadn't even seen, you know, the destruction that happened. And so I, I take... And then having signals and signs other than human to give us a little, hey, right, oh, thank you, you know. Because otherwise, yeah, we're constantly questioning ourselves because of all that system where, you know, oh, that was that song, or oh, we heard this, or and everybody's scared because we don't want to do wrong, mm. but we've got to do. Mm. Mm. It's a powerful thing that you've said. And I, I, I had a, um, I was lucky enough to listen to some language heroes talk about language revi revival in New South Wales. And, you know, that is another, oh, it's just a beautiful community. And talking about how um, sometimes it's difficult to engage older people who may not have had the opportunity to learn language because they're at the age where they should be teaching. But there are younger people who are more proficient at language and that's a, that's a sorrow that our old people carry. And I think... Um, my experience in music making is a little bit the same, that there, um, we, we have um, beautiful elders who uh, feel, are made to feel the loss of what was uh, um, uh, what's that? I'm going to get the words right here. It's important. What was forcibly disconnected from them uh, and in a ceremonial sense 
can't move into that space or won't. And I get it. And I understand um, what I'm learning from you guys now is you just have to keep feeding the connection, the thing that we have now, and songs and sound and song lines perhaps will come from that. And I'll just say this one last thing, you know, because I think a lot about it and I worry about it because I want those beautiful, powerful things to come back through our country and psh, keep going all the way where it's supposed to and to connect us through that ceremony to those people. I want that. Um, and sometimes I get down thinking we don't have the structure. I was asking you about the structure that you have. We don't have the structure for that. But one of our important old men had some ladies from the desert over into Uwalurai country and they said, tell us where this place is. It's a, it looks like this and it's got a thing beside it. And they'd never been to Uluru before, Narran Lakes they were. Uh, he took them there. And now tell us where this place is that looks like this in Haslam. Now tell us this other place. They crisscrossed through um, Uluru, describing places they'd never seen before. And that night he asked them, he said, how did you know about them waterholes? And they said, your old people gave us your dreaming to hold on to. And so that makes me um, joyous that even if I'm not the one who says, come on now, we've got this song line, we're going to sing it up, let's go. Even if I'm the post-it note in the book, I know what's coming. I'm the placeholder for the people that will make that, bring that back together. And that is, that, if that's a role for me, I'll play that till the cows come home, till we can jump the fence to get over to that place. Mm -hmm. I'll do that because our old people had that foresight, you know. Yeah. At the beginning, um, Jackie's um, not here tonight, but she has been really enjoying listening online, she tells me. And um, and I think, uh, is this going through? Should I keep going? Yeah. Um, and she just was thinking about the discussion that you were all having and wanted to talk about how her Narugu mob's inter interpretation of the the song that she's been working on from these old historical sources, Song of the Women of the Monero, that was written down as a snowmaking song, has given Narugu people a way to begin singing back to our country and to listen as it responds. Um, and Jackie says, our country in the snowy mountains sings back to us, it sends us snow. And that Jacinta's mum knows when we're singing all the way up in the Blue Mountains, she says, it's too cold, tell Jackie's mob to stop singing that snow song. <laughs> it's getting... Mum's on the plane, yeah. She it's getting play. famous, yeah. It's really connecting us to our snow country, singing up the snow. We're also renewing our language as we renew our songs. So we get to hear Jackie's voice, um, even though she's far away. And um, if it might be a good time maybe also to ask if anyone has questions, if that's all right with the three of you. Um, I was just thinking back to Neil's comment that this is the first time we've kind of had a, a hook panel instead of a hook lecture, mm -hmm. and how everything, the way the three of you have... Um, engage with each other, but also the ideas and the emotions that you bring to thinking about the way songs are relational, but also all your work is so interwoven in relationships with people and with country and with the non-human, I think, um, really uh, makes me so glad that we've been able to have a panel hook instead of a single lecture, because you've really demonstrated that in practice in a really wonderful way. 
So thank you so much for that. Um, we have a little bit of time for um, Q&A if anyone has any questions in the room. I understand that people online can chat, but I don't seem to be able to access it, so maybe if there's any questions coming through online, someone can let me know. Um, and um, uh, before you ask a question, I should let you know that this is being recorded and being transmitted online, so if you don't wish no, to, be, <laughs> to be recorded, then, um, then you perhaps shouldn't ask a question, or not shouldn't. You should wait until you leave the room or something. Um, and also that there's a roaming mic so that when you ask your question, the people who are listening online will be able to hear. Okay. Well, so would anyone in the room like to... Yeah, Jason. Please wait for the mic, though. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to note that what we're doing here is substantial. We're in an environment where song and music is something for entertainment. But according to our history, the song lines are about law and administration. And in as much we carry our ancestors with us, we have the ability to carry it on through understanding these song lines. And I want to recognise the potential that we all have in this and say thank you because the ancestors are working through this, that we would come back to our law and administration. Is this something that you have considered in taking this more than just an art? Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. Than an art? Yeah, I think about that all the time. I think about that all the time. And uh, thinking about that, I realised last night um, there are limitations for me that I need to be aware of because I don't live in country. Like, you know. And I've been trained um, in the city. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> so... Uh, the skills that I have may not be useful in the ways that they're needed in the place that I am passionate about. And I think having that self-awareness is important. I'm, and I'm not using it as a way not to do anything, but I think... Um, uh, I think about, and I, I, my whole thing at the moment is this idea of performance versus practice. I'm desperate to practice culture. And it makes me wild with performing <laughs> because I want more. Uh, and just because I want it doesn't mean that it's right for people where I'm from. So it's a, like a dance. We talk about song and dance. It's a dance between, for me, um, how, what I know and how that can be useful. I think about that all the time. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think about it. think about a song um, that was, a few songs that were sung out um, Western New South Wales, on Nyambar country, um, about like they were making songs about people <clears throat> that would uh, be playing up in the pub drunk, you know, <laughs> and they're getting into fires and stuff, and they were making songs about these people to regulate them. Oh, you hear about that fella that was singing it, just getting on the blue with that fella, and, and then everyone knew about it, so, you know, <laughs> that's a good way to shut them up. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, yeah. Sing, oh, actually, they were categorised in one study. Done, they called them "sing you down" songs. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about singing up the country, but you can. Sing it. <laughs> um, so you know, like songs have a lot of function, like that. You know, for people, making sure people are respectful and following law and being be, behaving, um, uh, reminding each other of their obligations to one another. I guess, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, songs are fun too. So, yeah. <laughs> Songs make us laugh and they also make us go, whoop. <laughs> yeah. oh, and I think 
wouldn't it be a, like I, I want to dream this new reality up, you know? And and I think about because also a lot of our song lines are your highways and your free and your, your your main roads now and and even when I was you know near West, we're at Hyde Park Inn you know and I'm thinking yeah that's an old song line that's an old song line oh there's Parramatta Road that's an old song line where the hell would you find space to actually create that energy like the energy is still there and 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 that's the thing too is like you got to think. If we've got such ancient history, no, not got, if we, we've got ancient history and this spit called 250 years is only but a spit in the ocean compared to that mass of time. And, and so, you know, there's a part of me that thinks, all right, we could have, like, I really dream big, you know, like, so I go into reverse magnetic engines that <laughs> don't even touch the ground, so then uh, that, that other than human has a chance to, to be. And I think we really need, like, we're even working with developers at the moment. Um, and I, I actually said to Stocklands the other day, you know, you guys need to actually build buildings that there's, because there's solar panels out there that create water. So they're not just going to get water, they're going to get power as well. We've got to stop taking from nature at the way we do. At, at, and everything we're wearing right now came from the earth. Everything here came from the earth. And we don't think about that cause and effect. And that's what the, the, the law and, and the song lines was also about behavioural responsibilities. So, yeah, I, I dream, I, I yearn and I want to dream, dream that new, new existence. And I think, and, and invite all Australians to come for a walk because we all, everybody's got different parts of the world here. So if we do it right here, we're going to share it with the rest of the family. <laughs> and the rest of the family are here too. So it would be a nice way to, to teach, you know, that everybody has that connections here in country and we share it out to the rest of the world and we can change. I've got faith in us, yeah? And poor old nature's had enough of us anyway, so, you know, be, <laughs> do it or, or sure. I was in Cyclone Tracy when I was a kid and you can wake up one day and find out all your electricity's gone. You can wake up and find out all your water's gone. You know, so it, it does happen. It's not a thing. If she and she's not going to say, "Are you a nice person? Are you a bad person?" Yeah. Slap. <coughs> we all get hit. <laughs> it was the same. The dog shakes the fleas off. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Mm. There, um, I can't see any questions online, but there are a couple of comments. I just want to make sure you receive you three that. Um, Bernadette Hardy is talking about how refreshing it is to hear from three scholars who question themselves and as academics not to be the knowers of all but to listen to things other than human. What an honour. Please say thank you for all that you do. Um, and there's a few other comments coming in. We probably have time for one more question if anyone in the room has one. If you just... Um, here in the middle... Um, Anthony. So much input. It's um, really very special to be in the yarning space. Really appreciate that um, that energy that you've created and shared. Uh, I'm thinking about something you said, Nadi, about your being a city person and trying to work out what that structure might be, what your role might be, and, and I'm reminded of a very special person who's no longer with us um, from up Catherine Way, Jawoin country, um, Tommy Lewis. I don't know um, if, if you're familiar with him and the work that he's done in revitalisation. That was where I first encountered that sort of talk. Um, I'm sorry to... Yeah. He, he also, I think, would have related to what you said. And what he did was create a space for songmen and dancing to happen and share in that Arnhem Land cycle. Um, and I know in Western Australia there's, there's also work with that Wernan cycle of energy. So... 
that that sharing and, and that dancing, singing, um, holding and owning, it, it, there's, it's happening around the country in other places. I know we're talking about New South Wales here. Um, Kerri Ann, I'm sure you're aware of, of what's happening in other places. Um, There's a lot of strength that can come from continuing. So thank you for sharing all that. I think it's a world, I think it's a world thing going on. But, you know, lockdown. I heard someone say, mm -hmm. you know, that you know we got slapped on the butts and told to go into our bedroom and think about our behaviours. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was very clever. Um, and there is something very strong that's going and, and the kids are the kids are onto it our kids like the new the little like the the new generations oh my god really we weren't even thinking about this stuff when we were kids you know but mind you we were on bikes <laughs> not on the screen mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah there's something powerful going on and and we've got to have faith i think as as human beings and put it in the Um, just thanking the panel because I can listen to Nadi all day, as she knows. <laughs> but I was lucky enough to take um, sister, auntie Jacqueline Troy up to my property in the Snowy Mountains. I'm a Narigo woman. And we found a whole heap of uh, stone tools. And um, I'm at an elevation of 1,200 feet or metres. I don't know what would it be. Metres. And along with those artefacts, we found a heap of river rock, you know, so how does it get up so high? But um, so I've had those listed with the Department of whatever it is, Heritage, whoever they are, they come up. But also I have worked in ACT Parks and Conservation and I have been up into rock shelters in Canberra up high with sea turtles hmm. drawn, you know, so that's a really good indicator of South Coast mob coming up through our high country and leaving their their drawings on our on our rocks and you know just to find those remnants of mob that have gone through in such high country you know my little piece of paradise you're all welcome yeah. come yeah. yeah um but to spend the day up there with jackie was amazing and um can't wait to see her again thanks and thank you Auntie Carrie Ann. Democrat, democracy is to demonstrate as creative beings and to keep the dreaming alive. And we would like to give you this for you to sing you up again. For you, Nadi. For you three. Uncle Ibal, my father. Naiba, you ready? Yeah. We're gonna. We, <laughs> we, we're gonna. <laughs> democracy is demon, demicraft. <laughs> hey, it's, D, I said we were decolonizing. Uncle. This is what we do, curry time, yes. on, and we just <laughs> go we're taking with the it flow. now. You wanted the reality, so we are create a reality beings <laughs> of our own reality. I'm speaking as Wanjina. I'm speaking as nothing and everything. I'm speaking as you. Baniwal Bulkulara Wadi Yalman, from the languages of the four directions of the earth, Bura, all our celestial bodies and all our kinships and our song lines here today, and that you may spread the light and be our runners right through. For we are here, and we were always here, a part of our soul contract. You all arrived on time. So, Uncle Ibal, my Ibal, my father, would you hold a song for us here? You are just gonna, we, this is like, this is like, you know when we open? This is like our opening now of all of us because like, oh, all right, we're gonna open now and we got this wild woman from the West. That's 
just come back from the bush. And I chose to be a song woman. I chose to be a song woman. I am Kerry Ann Cox. I'm an international singer songwriter. I'm independent. I'm everywhere. And I'm here too. But I choose to be a song woman. And that's what I chose. Because to me, protesting the ground is to test the ground that I choose to be and to remember who I am. And through the holding of Bugarigara creation story, Epic Center Trade Center, in Jajalalalalalaburu, Broom, we call it, we call it Wadi. So I come from Wadi Kolara, Northwest. Kolara Wisdom, West Coast. Wadi, Islands, North Ancestor. One ancestor, creator, great spirit forever. Yambaburu, our house, our ancestors' house. We share together. Jina wala wangu banji. Jina wala sharing. Ngaju yunga yagi, you, me, all of us. Wangu banji, exchanging a trade. I'll be having some possum. I'm possum too. Broom people are possum people. Jaja la 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 buru. So when you come to the land of sand, great, great sand dune, ja, ja, la, 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 but I'm a little flatlander too. So, <laughs> so they say, so we'll see the sound as we're moving through. And now that I'm open through the song man and through all of you here, I can sing the song and I can, I can move the dances and I can come in and bring this lore in and say, this is how we are, that's right. You blow a gale, you come in, and Mary Poppins is in town. No, she is. And I said, she got a big bag. She invited you there, so don't <laughs> go and in, be in that invitation. And I said, oh, I hope you can deep dig, because there's layers, right? And she can go deep in there and pull out. <laughs> she can pull out whatever she wants, because we're creating. We're not in the simulation anymore. We're not colonized. We're not boxed in. And that's your story, too. I am... Balmoral Castle, House of Cox, I have a clan seat and a family seat. Mind your manners, House of Mana. Stuart Cox, I'm a gladiator, but I want peace, so I send a wooden sword back to Ireland, because all reverts back to Ireland, the meridian grid of Gaia. That's why we fight over the Isle of Wight. Irish. Arr. Oh, just a little. Yes. <laughs> so, Uncle, will you do the honors and come here and show you beautiful, take your mask off and show the spirit of the land. And this is part of the healing now when we say, we're gonna let it all go because it's stopping us. It's time now, the bloods are mixed and we know who we are together. Um, I said to Windsor, dead of Hanover, Germany, I said, we're Balmoral and we're part of the United Kingdom. We are the Picts and the Shays, the Titans, all those things, and I'm really happy. I also said to my brother here, welcome back, Vedas, because Perth line is the ancient Brit line with the Indians, the, the Vedas. I'm also Fernandez, Portuguese, Banyaro, woohoo, solid. I embrace the rainbow serpent skins that I have within me, which is the colors of the black, blue, yellow, red, and white. It's the primary skins that makes the shade and the colors of the rainbow. So I'd like to bring the, our family up, Nyambaburu, would you like to come up? Because we, did, we do it together, right? And we're showing you now, because this is for you. It's for you now, to give back to you of what you've sung us through. Like, you can sing me right here, the three of you, you know? And you make me happy, really happy. This is our time. Section 44 is foreign-based members and their establishments can't sit for the parliament of this country. I'm the ancient voice on behalf of all of us. Baniwalbul, through the river, the coast, the island, and the desert. And the desert shall sprout green again. We're moving through those corridors, so I move through the corridors with you. I fly on Qantas, the kangaroo, because kangaroo can leave broom, jajalalala, in dust, and arrive here at dawn. And that's what I did. Thank you, Buru Magaya. Queensland Aviation National Transit Airline Service. It's our airline. And old people said, hey, Karen Cooks, which airline are you traveling on? Oh, on Qantas? Ah, oh, that's good. The spirit of the country. You're right, my girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, my old people. I love you, my old people. I love you all, my old people. Don't forget. Don't forget who you are. 
we're bringing you home too, because that's part of all our story. Then we can be free together. There are no boundaries, right? And I also speak as delegation on behalf of Mother Earth and all our delegations under our international treaty agreements. And when an international treaty has been violated, Article 36 is to be recited in our defense for our international trade and our rights through those corridors. There are no boundaries because our behavior and practices can get better. So we're here to raise the bar and we are the Bar Council. And we are to raise the bar to bring, this is what we bring you now. But you come in now and you land and you ground in this place. You're coming back home to the first mitochondrial DNA, Bugariara. I speak as Jungai, star grandmother, seven sisters, DNA strands. I come from the nursery ground of the spirit of creation of the human animals with a post-bull thumb over all primates. Lucy, thank you, Homo erectus, Homo sapien, Homo luminous, light. Okay. So we're coming through the shift and we're growing up and we're moving through together. So I'm just going to, yeah, you're not clapsy, right? I was gonna play guitar, do a little, um, cause I'm high frequency, I'm a sweet song, so I'm not gonna lower my vibe for no one anymore. <laughs> It's like you come up now. Me jara jara ra jara ra ra je boro ra guja. Rise to lightning spirit. Earth ground. Get up, stand up. Get on with it. So it's like we don't make excuses. We just make a deal that we all have to come together. And that's what the animal kingdom, kingdom, not kingdom, kingdom, main, domain, macroorganism, microorganism, not parasitical based. But good bacteria is good culture. Ancient culture is psychology 101. Take it away, my <laughs> uncle, my father. All right. It's the thing, just in case you want to join us, but you got your mics on, Baru, you're here. And you can join in too, because this is for who's passing through. We have to sing them home. We're going to sing all our people home, all right? Right through from all those ages of pain, body, separation story. That's the end of a cycle of 28,000 year cycle. We're moving into an epoch, which is a great shift, it's greater than an age. Don't shoot the messenger. All right. Thank you all for coming, bringing me here safely, all of you. Guru, thank you so much. Governor General, thank you very much. But she'll, it's not the governor in the way that we do it. We're self-governing beings, having a human experience, okay? And then we go back to the stars, back to creation. So, all right, thank you. <laughs> signature key, your tone first, so we all have a signature frequency tone, so I'm alto soprano, I can go, hey, and loop, all right, me and the next
Too, that we have a chance to thank us, for, thank you three for bringing us such a rich discussion right. to Jacinta Tobin, Jesse Hodgetts, and Nadi Simpson. Thank you much, so much for sharing your us. And thank you, Carrie Ann and the Narugu singers, for bringing that, that process of learning song. And um, we can continue the songs and discussion out in the foyer where there will be some drinks and um, canapes and um, we can all have further discussion. So thank you, everybody, for coming along. Good night. Pleasure. Do you want Thank you. <laughs> Just wanted to share with you two the comments from Deborah Cheatham, who has been watching, and Tom Feenberg. Thank you.